Resurrection Sunday voice. Shout an amen. We appreciate you for God tuning in with Christ all. Covenant Chapel, a Bible-believing church where people are being developed to impact their generation. As you join us today, our prayer is that this service will deliver a message that reminds you of God's boundless love for you, filling your life with hope and inspiration. As you engage in our worship and listen to today's message, we are confident that this service will leave an indelible mark on your life. If you have the opportunity, we extend a warm invitation to join us in person at 5452 DuPont Avenue North, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, 554. Happy Easter this morning! You died for us. You rose again. We worship you. We believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask for your prayer. Lord, we ask you move this morning. Ah, we bless you, Lord. We thank you. We worship you. We lift you up. We exalt your name. We invite you this day. In fact, you are here already. So we ask you, Lord, you inhabit our praise. You inhabit our worship. Take all of it. Take all we bless you, Lord. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sins. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. So his blood has covered my sins. I believe. Do you believe? 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. No one will sing how great, how great is our God. I'll take it again. How great we sing, how great.
That's what he does. He's such an amazing guy, yeah. I've been 
of you has the Lord been good to? I know he was good to me. He died today. Oh my Lord. others. Whether you are a preacher, a teacher, a server, or a holder of any other spiritual gift, your role is paramount. Your service matters. The big question though is, will you answer the call? When we unite, acknowledging and employing our spiritual or physical gifts, we manifest God's glory on earth. It is a call to serve, a beckoning to a higher purpose. Let's take a step forward understanding our gifts and use them for God's greater glory. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, the Bible says of David, Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. 
Bible tells us that before David fell asleep and was buried with his fathers, he served his generation. He lived by serving. Most of us, we die without having lived. The Dalai Lama, when asked what surprised him most about humanity, he answered, man. Why? He said because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he is never going to die. And then he dies having really lived. End of quote. See, before you die, live. Live. How do we live? We live by serving God and others. We all have something to serve humanity with. You came to the earth naked, but you did not come empty. You came to the earth with something that humanity needs. No matter what you have been through, you are valuable and you have something to serve. Most Christians approach life as if it were a slot machine. We want to put as little as possible into it and we always hope to hit the jackpot. Invest in people. Invest in people simply because they are valuable. They are important. Serve people because they are valuable. The Son of Man came to serve, not to be served. You see, if you don't think someone is important, you will never have a sense of service towards them. Focus on what you could give rather than what you could get. When you do that, people blossom, relationships mature, and life becomes more rewarding. In this month, we will look at number one, the call to serve. What does it really mean? What does it look like? Number two, what are the hindrances to service? And number three, the benefits of service. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our month to embrace the call to serve. I will see you at the top. Shalom. Hallelujah. Your amen is weak. Hallelujah. Amen. True story. Christ did come. He went on the cross. He died just as they said, or he said, we should say. Then guess what? On the third day, thank you very much, whoever did that. God bless you. On the third day, God bless you. I'll try again. And on the third day, now we are talking. Guess what? He rose again. And when he went, when, you see, when they went to the tomb, I caught a revelation. When, he went, when they went to the tomb, I'm sure if in contemporary times it was now, Jesus probably or the angel who announced his, you know, disappearance um, would have said, psych. Young ones, don't worry, they don't understand. They were born yesteryear. The angel would have said, psych. Those of you from Ghana and the other places, I said, Sete, wah. So guess what? We are telling the devil today, Sete, wah. Those of you who are Americans, psych, he's risen. Oh, I said he's risen. He's risen. He's risen. And what it means is that our debts are cancelled. We no longer owe nothing to the devil. When he checks his bank account, it is zero because he's no longer going to get anything inflows again because Christ has died for us. We learned yesterday that we got the power. We are free, transform. Freedom is our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, at this time, we are going to invite the king's kids. We know how important they are to the Lord, and we are not going to leave them out of today's celebration. So, king's kids, are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, uh, please come up. Please come up. Oh, they are coming. Clap for them, please. Clap for them. Clap for them. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Today we have the King's Kids here to read you guys some poems and some memory verses as we celebrate today. Hello, CCC. Hello. Hello. Happy, happy
Happy Easter. Today we're <laughs> today we're going to be sharing some verses and poems from the Bible. I hope you enjoy. I will be reading from Ephesians 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Cross, a symbol of my faith that strengthens me each day as I, by God's grace, walk the narrow way. You see God's own son, he gave his life for me and took my dead to a place called Calvary. I owe him my life and all I ever be. All he asks is that I let him live through me. So I run the race, empowered by his grace. All of the glory be to him. <laughs> as I look into his face, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. His love. God sent his son to take the punishment for all the thoughtless, sinful things we do. Jesus gave his life because he loves us. His love is boundless, sweet, and forever true. On Easter morn, he proved he is our savior. His resurrection proves he is our Lord. That is why we tell you, happy Easter. He has secured our heavenly reward, amen. John 11, verse, John 11, verse 25 through 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they will die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Amen.
It's what our God has done in me. Amen. As no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for a friend. Thank the Lord for such a wonderful reminder that he loved us so much that he gave everything for our sake. Well, at this time, we're going to have the covenant expressions um, and then surprise us so they can exalt the king. Hallelujah. CCC family and happy Easter to you all. Our ministration today is inspired by Re Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 through 13. And it reads, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. This Easter, we acknowledge the ultimate sacrifice made by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who willingly gave his life to redeem humanity. As we reflect on his death and resurrection, let us remember that his victory over sin and death brings hope and salvation to all who believe. Just as the multitude in Revelation praises the Lamb, let us too lift our voices in thanksgiving and honor Christ as the one who conquered the grave and reigns victorious with power and authority. May we be reminded of the incredible love of God displayed through the sacrifice of his son. Glory to the Lamb. Amen. Is the kingdom glory to the Lamb? Glory to the Lamb. Holy, 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 
holy is he so together let's sing glory to the lamb father we sing tonight glory glory to the lamb
lift him, he'll draw. If you lift him, he'll draw. Covenant expression, ladies and gentlemen. I think you can give it up better than you did. Give it up to them. All adults in the house, let's stand up and clap for them. Every adult in the house, just encourage them. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Please have your seats. And on that note, um, did you see the, the cartwheels? Please don't try this at home, okay? All right. We want, to, we want to channel our prayers to things that really matter. Don't try this at home, okay? All right. Wonderful. Well, um, it's, it's, a, it's been a wonderful time. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, there's a difference between a concert and worship. Concert is more you being entertained, right? But then worship is you entertaining God. So where we are coming to, it's a very important time. I know you're looking your Sunday best, Easter best, with your hat, with your white clothes, I mean, new shoes. Um, perhaps your makeup is new. Just pick that up from Macy's. But this time, I want you to forget about you. And remember what Christ did on the cross. You know, yesterday... Um, Reverend Enoch just says something very powerful in Colossians 2. I'm just going to read the scripture and I'll get out of your way. Colossians 2, 13 and 14, it says that when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, reading from the Amplified, it says in parentheses, worldliness and the manner of life. God made you alive together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our sins, having canceled out the certificate of debts, consisting of legal demands which were in force against us and which were hostile to us. And this certificate, are you ready? This certificate he has set aside and completely, I have news for you, Christ, through his death, he has completely removed by nailing it to the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were to present something to Jesus, this is a time to do so. How are you going to do it? I'll leave you to make that decision. But don't let your mascara hold you back. Don't let your shoes hold you back. Don't let your white clothes hold you back. Let us come before God in the pureness of heart, in a contrite heart. Lay down if you have to lay down. Clap your hands if you have to clap your hands. Lift up your hands if you have to lift up your hands. Run around if you have to run around. But by all means, make sure that you are bringing a special thank you to Jesus at this time. And on that note, I want us to rise up and introduce or bring up, I should say, the minstrel for the moment. Lady Mavis. Oh, come on. Apaka, God bless you. Somebody clap your hands. I don't know why you're sitting down. Today is a resurrection Sunday. And when he died, he rose again. I came to announce to you that the tomb is empty. Are you alive in this place this morning? I said the tomb is empty. And when the tomb became empty, that is why you are alive. That is why you have breath. Somebody clap your hands. Don't just stand there and stare at me. We came to worship God. We came to give him the glory. We came to give him the honor. Give him a shout in this place. I said give your God a shout in this place. He is risen. He is risen. When I say he's risen, you say he's risen in me. He is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Head of thy church, triumphant. We talk. Come on now, adore. Till thou 
appears thy mercy. Do we know the song at all? Right. And this morning, what do we come to do? Come on now. Yes, 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 yes. yes.
try on this terrain for you just lift your hands to him all my justice
this song else I can't sleep hallelujah and in three minutes I'll, I'll sure I'll do it amen who taught the sun where to stand in the morning are you there and who told the ocean you can only come this far and who show the moon when high till evening whose words alone can count your falling spell come on everybody we declare I 
same God that spins things in orbit. Once through the weary, the worn and the weak, hallelujah, and the same gentle hands that holds me when I praying for me. I think I'm losing my voice already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Lady Mavis, you know the song, um, he is alive again. The stone's been rolled away. You don't. It's an old one. You are too young. Anybody in the choir? If she does, only me. It means I've been doing this for a while, eh? <laughs> well, we'd like to welcome every one of you. Thank you for joining us for service this morning. Why don't we put our hands together and welcome our cyber audience? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Oh, the yes was so weak. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That is not good news. So that is fantastic news. You know why? Because he lives.
Send his star. What is his name? His is it called him? Is Jesus. As we read God's word for today. If you are able, can you please rise up on your feet? Once again, we welcome all of you. Matthew 28, reading from verse 1 through 10. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began 
to dawn. There is a whole lot of conversation going on as to whether Easter is a Christian thing or that we should even celebrate it at all. Um, I was telling you last Friday that Jesus Christ said after his resurrection that every day is holy unto the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? So, whether he died around this time or not, the most important thing is that he died. You know what I'm saying? And so, we set a time aside to celebrate this defining moment in our lives as Christians. So, whether it happened in April or May or July or whatever. And some people say that it was Emperor who, who, who established and that Easter was for, you know, so whatever. We've taken it. And we are using it to celebrate our God. Amen. Hey, a group of people took the rainbow. And they said, it is their pride. We have taken Easter. Your problem. Amen. Amen. And, and, and whether the holiday is Sunday, every day, you go to Arab nations. I was in Dubai. Their, their weekend starts from Friday and Saturday. Their week begins on Sunday. So church service is held on Friday. Are you telling me because it's held on Friday, God is not there? Oh, come on, somebody. You know it's Sunday here. It's Monday in Australia. Listen, there are people who are anti-Christ and would want to do anything and use anything to discredit our God. Let us be smart. Today there are people who are Christians who are hope they won't go to church because it is not supposed to be celebrated. Bible says that on the, please give me back my test. On the first day of the week began to dawn. Today is the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. I like the way Bible put that one. And the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Now hold on for a minute. That is not when Jesus came out. Hello. Pastor Prince. The stone was there. He got out. And the stone was there. The angel didn't roll the stone away so Jesus can get out. He rolled it away so we can get in. And have evidence that it is empty. So there is an empty grave. I have been there. I have seen it to prove that my Savior lives. Hallelujah. He rolled back the stone. I like it. The Bible said he rolled it and he sat on it. It was like making a statement. Whomever thinks he's a man, come and roll it back. You, you think you are, come and touch it. And he sat on it because really he didn't have to sit on it. I mean, come on. I mean, but, but let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. His countenance was like lightning. And his clothing as white as snow. Let's keep going. Come on. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. You two would have been a dead man if you saw that. But the angel answered and said to the women, it's interesting. The women are shaking. The guards are shaking. But he spoke to the women. You will get it tomorrow. 
and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. But listen, he's not here. Pastor Enoch, if we don't say anything else again, this is good. This is good news. This is good news. You know, you know, when you live here today, I may not get to it, but, but tell all your haters that, that stop looking for me where I was yesterday. I, I ain't there no more. For he is risen just as he said. See, when the little children were reciting their things, I, I like whoever arranged it, God bless you. Amen. Because they quoted from John 11 and they finished with a question Do you believe? Because Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary and the women who went there, we are applauding them. But did they believe him when he said to them, on the third day, he would rise up? Because if they believed, they wouldn't have gone back looking for him there. They would have known that he's not there. Please give me my text. Give me my text. He's not here for his reason. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going, let's go, before you into Galilee. There you will see him. You will see him. Amen. It's not a, 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 a pigment, a, 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 a something in our imagination. You will see him. Listen. <laughs> Behold. I have told you. Amen. My question is, would you believe it? You know, when the angel made that statement, Pastor, I won't get time to, he said, he told you. You didn't believe it. You've seen it. I have told you. You go and tell them. He's not here. He's risen. He's gone before into Galilee. There you will see him. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. I want to pay attention to that. Fear and great joy. And ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. I told you before. You didn't believe it. You came here looking for me. You've seen the empty tomb. The angel has told you. Evidence. Here I am. Jesus himself came and met them saying, and I like what he said. When he came and said, he said, rejoice. Rejoice. So, they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Okay. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Father, help me this morning. In Jesus' name. Commit your word to your people with clarity and in a language that everyone will understand. We thank you for your presence here. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, and those of you who were not here on Friday and Saturday, you missed it. I wanted to do a recap for you, but I don't have time. So you go on Facebook and YouTube and check it out for yourself because you need to hear it. Amen. And so this morning, I want to speak on the subject it is Sunday, and it's Victory Sunday. Amen. Let me try it again. It is Sunday, and it is Victory Sunday. I don't like the way Lena is looking at us like. <laughs> I 
It is Sunday. Sunday. And it is Victory Sunday. Let's try and see if we can make sense of it in a little bit. On this weekend, all over the world, all over the world, people have gathered to celebrate the most significant and consequential event in human history. That is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is, I told you last uh, Friday, it is one thing to know that Jesus got up. But it is another thing to know what it means to you. You understand what I'm saying? It's one thing to know that Jesus did get up. But it's a totally different thing for you to know what that means to you and to your Christian experience. The resurrection is uh, a revelation of God's ability to orchestrate an unusual uh, recurrence. Uh, in other words, the resurrection is a powerful indication of the ability to bounce back. Hello. So, Jesus Christ came back and it is an indication to you and I that no matter what you are going through or dealing with, you can bounce back. Okay, some of you will get it later on. You can bounce back from situations and circumstances that people say will bury you. Okay, okay. Today, I want you to know this before you get out of here that there is nothing average about you. Oh. When you think about the things God has done for you and with you and through you and by you, you will realize that you are not on you, you are not you are not usual. Today is Victory Sunday. Today is Bounce Back Sunday. You are walking into an unusual recovery. Oh, come on, somebody. Today I came to tell somebody, bounce back. They walked away from you, bounce back. They rejected you. Bounce back. They fired you. Bounce back. Oh, they divorced you. Bounce. Uh, you will recover. You will. Re you, you will recover everything. Uh, look at yourself and say, "I will bounce back." Listen, people are going to be surprised because the last place they saw you was in the tomb. And they are expecting you to be in that same condition. But they don't realize that God has blessed you and has changed your location. So, He's no longer there. Tell your neighbor, I'm no longer there. I have changed my address. Jesus was crucified in 33 AD. That's Anno Domini, it's Latin. And Pastor Mark, there were only 120 true followers who believed completely. We know that. Today, there are over 2.3 billion people who claim to be followers of Christ. 
Now, we keep hearing this on the news, that Christianity is dying. It's not true. It's not, it's not dying. Now, there are about 6.8 billion people on planet Earth. 2.3 of them say that they believe and they are followers of Jesus Christ. That means one out of every three people on earth. You are not stupid. You are not a fool for believing that he died and he rose again because one third of the world believe with you. Listen, you know what 2.3 million is? Billion is. So the church, Pastor Enoch, is bigger than China, Europe, and USA all put together. The church is bigger than that. You, you don't know, eh? Think about this. Don't worry. Me, the, the pastors were harassing me this morning about my time situation. Listen, listen. You all knew I was going to tell on you. Let me tell you something. When I see CNN, MSNBC, Fox News telling us that Trump, his numbers are increasing. And it's increasing because of evangelicals. You know what that tells me? It tells me you are a powerful force. The church is a strong force that the world must reckon with. That we can't be joked with. You don't have to like him. I personally don't like the man. I'm just saying, I don't like his rhetorics. I think he can do way better and get me to live on him if he can change the way he says things. That's all I'm saying. But the fact that a man who says, I am standing on this ticket for believers and his numbers are rising and the world is afraid, it means they are afraid of you. You know why they are doing everything to shut us down? They're scared. But I came to tell them something. We ain't going nowhere. But this is it. 120 people, Pastor. Today there are 2.3 billion people. How did that happen? How did 120 scared people? Do you realize that in the narrative we read, Lady Mavis, the angel looked at him, they were shaking. He's like, don't be afraid. The master comes, they are shaking. He says, don't be afraid. They were fearful people. They were all hiding. How did these fearful, timid men, 120 people, turn from 120 to 2.3 billion? Am I, am, I, am I doing okay so far? Yes. Listen, I, I, just want to, I just want to draw your attention to something before I really talk about what I really want to talk about today. We're talking about a little band of 12 men. How did that expand to one out of every three? It is all in one word. Resurrection. Resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, that changed everything. That is the most significant event in history. Nothing even comes close. Nothing comes close. Today, listen, every event in <laughs> is dated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Either before or after. Do you know even your birthday is dated by the date, the month, and the year of how long it was after Jesus. It is the most significant event in history. Why? Because Jesus resurrected. 
Oh, by the way, he was not resuscitated. There is a difference between resuscitation and... <laughs> Resurrection means you died. You were buried for days. And nobody came and performed anything. You came back to life by yourself. Only Jesus has done that. I heard, I heard this, this week, this was on the news, this week, I mean, on social media. An East African pastor said, he's going around saying he's Christ. Anybody read it? I think it's in Kenya or something. Kenya, eh? and, and the Kenyans, the community that he was claiming, they said, it's okay. We don't have any problem with you. But Easter is coming. We will kill you. <laughs> and then come back to life. The pastor is missing for days now. You know, it is this one event that caused fearful men to turn around with boldness and confidence spreading this good news, news of hope all over the world. Because when they realized that Jesus is risen, it changed everything. Changed everything. You see, it's Sunday. It's Victory Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Victory Sunday. I read a book written by Tony Campolo. The title of the book is that It's Friday. It's Friday. And I borrowed a few thoughts from him this morning to share with you. And then I'll narrow it down to Sunday. He said... It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. <laughs> it's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. He said, it's Friday. Pilate is struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary is crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sunday is coming. Oh, it's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scarlet. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday is coming. It's Friday. We see Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood is dripping. His body is stumbling. And his spirit burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday is coming. You all got to help me this morning. It's Friday. The world is winning. People are sinning. And evil is grinning. It's Friday. They say, the soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. And it's Friday. It's Friday. But I came to tell somebody today that Sunday is not coming. Sunday is here. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has achieved. But they don't know that it's only Sunday is coming. You all got to help me this morning. It, it, it's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. Feeling forsaken by his father. Uh, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Um, 
It's Friday. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has conquered. And Satan is laughing. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's only Friday. It's only Friday. Sunday is coming. And, and uh, Pastor Enoch, is it okay? Uh, I didn't do the message. He did it, but I want to do part two. So, so this is, it's Friday. Sunday is here. And Sunday is victory Sunday. Okay, 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 okay. It is Sunday and it's what? Victory Sunday. You see, the resurrection gives us hope. You see, the reason why the world is okay with the fact that he was born by a virgin. They can live with it. They can live with the miracles he performed. Turn water into wine. Raise the dead. It, it, okay. Nobody is questioning that. What they cannot accept is that he rose again. You know why? Because our very faith hinges on the simple truth that Jesus is no longer in the grave. He's alive. So if they can dismantle that argument. So Paul writes and says that when Jesus died, if he had not risen from the dead, then we of men would have been of all men the most miserable. But I came to tell somebody, it was only Friday. And it is Sunday today. And it is not any ordinary Sunday. It is victory Sunday. Are you here with me? So, so, so I'm not making it up. You see. Uh, 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 an, an angel of the Lord sat on the stone. And <laughs> you see, the fact that Jesus rose again is an indication that I'm no longer a slave to sin. Yes. Are you here with me? Yes. I'm sorry, you, you got to help me because m do something. About, um, my, my voice is struggling. <laughs> you, see, you see, so I can look at my life and say, hey, if he rose from the dead, then yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. Hey, it's a happy day. It is Sunday, but weeping may endure for the night. And I know joy is coming in the morning. But I came to announce to somebody, joy is not coming, joy is here. It is Sunday, and it is victory Sunday. Are you still here with me? It is Friday in your marriage. It may seem like darkness has covered it, but it's only Friday. Sunday is here, and it's Victory Sunday. It may be darkness, it may be Friday in your single life, but it's only Friday. I came to announce to somebody, Sunday is not coming. Sunday is here, and it's Victory Sunday. Somebody help me preach. It may be that you lost your job, but I came to announce to somebody, your finances may be bad, but that was only Friday. Today is Sunday, and it's Victory Sunday. You were down yesterday, uh, and they thought you were going to remain down. What they didn't know, it was only Friday. And today is Sunday, and it's Victory Sunday. Y'all got to help me this morning. They thought it was over just because they walked away from you. What they didn't know was that God was removing them because it was Friday and it's Sunday today. God is bringing you destiny helpers. He's bringing you destiny connectors. You guys got to do something. Are you, are you, are you, you, you're not ready for me this morning. You know, maybe it's Friday in your health. And, 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 and let me, let me use this. Let me use this, you guys.
in your health. Amen. I, I don't know who you are. And, 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 and you went for, it was just a regular checkup. And, and you walk home with some pretty bad news. But it's, it's only Friday. And today is Sunday. And it's Victory Sunday. So give me my text. Go, go to verse 8 thereabout. Let me pick up four things and I'll get out of your way. I promised you that I was going to be good. <laughs> so, they went out quickly from the tomb <laughs> with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. Keep going. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying to them, rejoice. Go to Go to verse number seven. There is a verse I'm looking for. The angel said to them, don't be afraid. Amen. I came to tell somebody, don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? That the enemy is going to win over you? Oh, Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not for I'm with you. Be not dismayed for I'm your God. He said, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I don't know. It may be, is, it, is it a business that is struggling? God sent me to tell you he will help you. No, you didn't hear what I said. He sent me to tell you he will help you. He's the helper to the helpless. When you don't have any help, there is one who is, a, he sticks closer than a brother. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord. He's the, listen, and he said to them, he said to them, but the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. No, you don't hear me. We listen to the news and it's terrible or awful. I don't know how a whole ship it runs into, you see, 31st night, I stood here and I told you all. Anybody remember? I know you've forgotten. Go back and listen to it. I told you these things were going to happen this year. But God says that he will provide. Amen. I was listening to a pastor and they were telling us how it's going to affect the economy and this is going to go wrong and it's not just uh, the Baltimore area. It's going to affect all kinds of countries. I looked at it and I was just like, I said, minus me. Why? Because at the beginning of the day, God told me that these things are going to happen and that I shouldn't worry because he got me. So I'm not afraid. Do not be afraid. Oh, you didn't hear me. I don't think you are hearing me this morning. He said that don't be afraid. Why? Because it is Sunday and it is Victory Sunday. He is alive. He is well. And because of that, whatever you are going through, he is going to take care of it. God will provide. So, listen, I am not insensitive. I am just a believer. Yes. Somebody will look at me and say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, really? Let me ask you. Whatever you are going through, is it bigger than somebody being dead and put in the grave? If it is not bigger than that, then don't be afraid. Hello, somebody. You get what I'm saying? Do not be afraid. afraid. Look at everybody and say, don't be afraid. You know why? Everything is going to be all right. God is in control. And whatever he said he would do, he would do it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Whatever God, whatever promise God has given to you, he is a promise keeper. He will keep his word. He's not like some of you. <laughs> and they said, please give me back the text, just where we were. They said, you see, the reason they said that, don't be afraid, he says, for I know that you seek the, 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 the Jesus who was crucified. Go, give me the next, the next, the next slide. He's not here. He's risen. The second point, they said, don't be afraid. He said, let me give you the reason why you shouldn't be afraid. He's risen. 
You didn't hear me. Let me try this side. Where they are so far. Don't be afraid. And the reason I'm telling you not to be afraid is because he's risen. So because he is alive and well, you can't be afraid. No matter what it is, you'll be alright. If he can raise Lazarus from the dead, he can heal cancer. No, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, really, Sister Zippo, he can raise the dead, but he can't heal sickness. How? I mean, sickness and dead. Which one is difficult? If you can raise the dead, he will heal the sick. I don't care what the doctor said. The doctors, they, they, they only tell you what their instruments are telling them. It is what the examination said. That is what they told you. But the examination is just the fact. It's not the truth. The fact is that I'm sick. The truth is that I am healed by his stripes. Because if I get sick and I cannot be healed, then what is the use of the stripes? Hey, then, bro, let me tell you, you were beaten for nothing. Yeah. Come on, somebody. But if you were beaten so that when I am sick, by your stripes I can be healed, then when I am sick, I don't care what the report says. It can say that stage 7, stage 20. It doesn't matter what stage. The only stage I know is that he is risen. And because he is risen, I shall be healed. Oh, it's Sunday. And it's Victory Sunday. Are you hearing me, somebody? I said it is Sunday. And it is Victory Sunday. Whatever it is, we win. 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 It's my Victory Sunday. Somebody shout, yes. Please sit down, sit down. Let me. So he said, don't be afraid because he's risen. And let me not bore you. Point number three is that he said to them, go and tell the story. Let's go and tell the story. Which one? He's not here. He's risen. Let's go and tell it. I wish I can dwell on that for a minute. Hmm? Let's go and share the testimony. Go tell that story. But let me, let me wrap up. I'm, I'm, uh, okay. <laughs> point number four. He says to them, so point number one, don't be afraid. Number two, because he's risen. Now that you have the evidence, you go and do it. You share it. All right. And then he gives us number four. Rejoice. I, you see, I didn't make it up. Give me verses 8 and 9. Let me wrap it up. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. So they were going, but still... Anybody felt like that before? My sister was sharing a testimony with me. It's a miracle that God has done. Amazing. All right. And then she tells me, my father, uh, Pastor, I'm afraid. I said, why? She said, I don't know if they will recall it. Said, ah. <laughs> a miracle has happened. You are afraid that they may cancel the miracle. What should God do with you? understanding what I'm saying. But it's not just them. He heals cancer. And every waking day, you are afraid that there will be remission. So you are going. You are joyful. But you are afraid. I'm telling you. 
Listen, some of you may think that I'm just making up. You, you don't know. Your neighbor feels that way. Even that job, that's a miracle that she has. She's afraid. When am I going to lose this one too? Oh, you will lose it. You will lose it. You will lose it. You see, when men lift you up, they can bring you down. But when God lifts you up, no demon in hell can bring you up. This is the doings of the Lord. And it is marvelous in our sight. Rejoice and be glad. It is God's doing. Nobody can reverse it. It is Victory Sunday. He says to them, please, give me verse 9. Let me wrap up. Let me wrap up. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. Because when Jesus met them, he knew that they have joy and fear. So he says to them, re You know, re is a prefix. So he's saying that, bring back the joy. Bring back the celebration. Bring back the victory. Because it is a done deal. Are you hearing me, somebody? He said to them, rejoice. He didn't say be happy. Because happy is based on happenings and circumstances. He said, I want you to have this resolve in you. And that, that joy that is going to come out is not based on anything that is happening. It's based on the fact that you have this resident truth in you that he's risen. The songwriter said, I have joy like a river. Joy like a river. Joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river. Joy like a river. Joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river. Joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river. I've got joy like a river in my soul. I don't know. I have peace like a river, peace like a river, peace like a river in my soul. Peace like a river, peace like a river. It's like a river in my soul. You know, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. I promised you I was going to be short today. I promised you. But then, the soldiers created a story that I want to end with. They said, let us go and tell people that his disciples, the same people who were afraid, came and stole the body. I mean, I didn't want to have anything. I, mean, I read the thing for myself. I read the book. Read it. Read, oh, read. Take the Bible. You read it too. I read the thing. And Pastor Mark, I saw something. Bible says when they entered, they saw his body clothes that they put on him. Folded neatly. Put at the head. And the thing they rubbed his head with, folded neatly. Put, I am wondering what kind of thieves are these. You are stealing a body. And you take away everything covering the body. So you can carry it naked. And you had time to fold it. Say, hurry up. No, no, let's fold it. Let's put it down neatly. What kind of robbers are these? It's only a fool who will believe that story. Because when thieves come to your house, when you walk in, you don't have to see something missing. You will know by the arrangement that thieves have taken things and they have been here. They would have known that they, you won't have time to fold anything. But the Bible said he folded it neatly with the stone still intact. He just walked away. But then I did a little research. And I realized that when a Jewish man visits your house and he eats and he's full and when he's leaving he just drops a napkin and walks away. He's saying to you that the food was not nice. The visit was not good. 
I am leaving, I shall not return. But when he finishes and he folds it together neatly and he places, Bible said it was placed. That means it wasn't just fling, it was intentionally placed. Please down. He says, when a Jewish man sees it, when that happens at the table, he's saying that I have enjoyed myself, the food was good, your hospitality was great, I shall return. So, I came to tell somebody, he is risen, it is Victory Sunday, but that is not the end of the story. He gave enough evidence to us that he is coming back. Jesus is coming back. The Lord is coming back. He is coming back. He is coming. No, you didn't hear me. He is coming back. He is coming back. Jesus is coming back. One of these days, he's coming back. One of these days, Jesus is coming back. Somebody shout here. Rise up on your feet. Please rise up on your feet. You know what? I'm going to end here in a minute. But we are going to have a celebration. If you want to go home, you can go home. But we're going to take about 15-20 minutes and just dance ourselves like when Pastor Enoch used to be before he became a Christian. I've seen a, a drunk person before. They see things that don't exist. Babu says they see human beings like trees. Yeah. See what I like about drunk people is that they are going like this and they are going and they are like falling. And then me that I'm standing straight, they say, easy, easy, easy. Steady, steady, steady. You know something is off. So today, we are not going to pray. We are not going to pray. We are just going to dance and celebrate Jesus. Let me, let me, let me ask you. Every eye closed. Every eye closed. Let me wrap this thing up. Every eye closed. You are here this morning. You say, brother, all the things that you said, how can I be a part of this? I want you to make a decision today. I want you to make a decision today. See, it's a very simple thing. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. And he turns your life around. It takes about 30 seconds. You are online, wherever. Just shoot your hand. You say, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord. Every eye closed. You, you know something I realized, Pastor Prince? Everybody Jesus called, he called them publicly. Never called anybody privately. Make that decision for him today. Hallelujah. Say, I want to accept Jesus. Just shoot your right hand. Thank you. I see one hand. I see one hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Close your eyes. It's between you and God. It's between you and God. Listen, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow is promised to no man. He's coming back one day. You are online. I may not see you, but lift up that hand. I want to pray with you. Make that indication to Jesus that I'm accepting you today. Every eye closed. Let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, today I come to you in humility and I confess to you that I'm a sinner. I need a savior. Come into my life. Today, I admit and I confess that you were born by a virgin. You suffered under Pilate. You were crucified. You died 
But on the Sunday, you rose again. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Come and stay. Don't only be my Savior. Be my Lord also. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, please, right after church, come and see our uh, uh, Pastor Prince, come and see Pastor Prince is the one in all white. All the pastors is the one, all white. You see. Pastor Mark is white in some color. Pastor is white in some color. All white. And we'll help you from there. Amen. If you're online and you accepted Jesus, please do me a favor. Just indicate in the chat box and somebody will reach out to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. We want to take our tithe, our tithe. Our tithers, please come forward. We want to do this quickly. Our tithers, please come forward. Let's do it quickly, 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 please. Let's do it quickly. Our tithers, please come forward. If you have a job and you don't tithe, I don't know why. It's a dangerous thing to do. It's a dangerous thing. Those of you online, please stand with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Let me prove at the tithe. Father, we present our tithe to you. It is our sweat, it's our labor. But we are doing this in obedience to your word, which says we should bring the tithe into your storehouse so there will be food in your house and you will make sure that we will never lack. By this act of obedience, we are asking that every blessing that comes with the tithing, we shall receive it. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We won't do the Titan confession today. Just drop it in. Just swipe your card. If you want to swipe your card, you can go back there. They will swipe it for you. If you want to use any of the three media that we have here, you can do Zelle, you can do Cash App, you can do PayPal, and, uh, and, and, and do your tithe. If you want to put cash in or check, you can also do so. Amen. We are going to take our offering. We're going to take our offering. Hallelujah. We're going to take our offering. Amen. I want to pray over the offering because I want to bring the choir on and then when we take the offering they will connect it to the priest time. Is that okay? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do so that I can bring them. Let's, let's rise up. We'll just do the offering. We'll just do the offering. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Rise up with your offering. Let's rise up. Write your check, your whatever it is you are using. Let's rise up. We'll bring our offering. You can tell I'm struggling with something, right? I've been struggling with something since Friday. And I really don't feel comfortable, but I, I think I guess I will just have to do it. Um, whatever happens, it's the Lord. So, let me prove out the offering. You bring it and then let me provide the offering. Father, we are bringing you our offering. We ask that you bless it. Bless the work of our hands. Because we have given, let there be a testimony in our lives. Let prosperity come now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who need to put it in, please come and put it in. Just come and put it in. Just come. Just come. Don't worry. Forget about ushers and all. Just come. Just come. No order. No order. Just come. Sister Roberta is confused. Those of you who have to do your cash up and things, just go ahead and do it. of you who are doing the 
what is it called? The Zell cash up and things. What's the name for it? The electronic thing. I don't know when you are done. So can I know if you are done? Just give me a wave if you are done. Some of you, I know it takes a while. Okay. Okay. All right. Please sit down. Lady Mavis, your, your people get ready. Let me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And listen to me. Listen to me. You don't have to do it. Friday, I was sitting here. During the offering time, I was going to give $50. And I pressed five and I pressed zero. I don't know how it happened. I pressed another zero. And it went to 500. I looked at the thing and I said, God forbid. So I deleted. And I gave my 50. And then yesterday I said, I was giving 50. I promise you, God is my witness. I promise you. I will not lie to you on this one. I was going to give another 50. I pressed five, zero. The next thing I know, I have pressed 500. No, so far I'm serious. And I said, no, no, no. It's not happening. And so I reversed. And I put in 50. But when I went home, the Holy Spirit said to me that, I want you to give that money. That is why I was punching it in. So this morning, I want us to give a special Thanksgiving offering. You don't have to do it. I'm not even telling you how much you should. Me, this is what I think. And I think I have lived with God long enough to figure out how he speaks to me. And I know he's talking to me. So I'm going to give my $500. I don't know how much you want to give. It's totally up to you. You don't even want to give it. That is totally fine. I'll still love you. But anybody who feels like God is pushing you in some way and you also want to give a thanksgiving offering and say, you know what? Thank you for dying for me. Please come, let me pray with you. And then we'll dance and go home. You don't have to. Again, you don't. You are online. You want to do it. Please do it. You don't feel like you say, Pastor, I don't feel today. Don't do it. Please come forward. Please come, please come forward. Those of you who want to do it, please come forward. Quickly, quickly. You say, Pastor, I, I can give a hundred. I can give two hundred, three hundred. You don't have to be five thousand, ten thousand. It's up to you. Totally up to you. Totally up to you. Even if you are doing it uh, through the, whatever you call it. What do you call it? The, the, the name you put all in there. Electronic. Yeah, even if you are giving electronic, Kali, please come. I want to pray with you before you go. Please come. Please come, please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Amen. 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 You are online. You say, I want, Pastor, I just want to give a Thanksgiving offering. Just give it. But just pray over it and say, Father, everything that is dead or dying in my life, let resurrection power bring it back to life today. In Jesus' name. Please come. Please come. Please come. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, lady. I'll wait for you. Rainy, are you coming? No, okay. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your promptings. I know when you speak, I have responded and I've asked your people to respond likewise. I don't even know what this is for. I don't even know what you are intending to do. But we have obeyed. Whatever you are going to do, your people receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Let resurrection power touch everything that is dead or is dying in their life. Let it come back to life in Jesus' name. Amen. Please go and sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Where's Lady Mary? There you go. Okay. Please, let's rise up on our feet. We will do our announcement later on, but we want to praise God. Let's clear this place. Let us praise God. Let's worship. Let's lift him up. Let's celebrate Jesus for what he's done to I didn't make it up. He said to them, rejoice. 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 
Rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we rise on our feet? Give the Lord a clap of praise. Oh, are you clapping? Hallelujah. Amen. No, no, no. So today we're going to do the special song Pastor requested yesterday. Ebenezer. That's how far God has brought us in it. Ebenezer.
finish, we have to dance. Amen. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Just taking away my pain with I am free. Do you remember that song? I got it. Oh. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, every day in Sakara. Double, double, heavy. What you say?
so where I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor I know I'm walking in power come on I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor I'm walking in power walking in miracles
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter CCC family and thank you for joining us today. My name is Akusia Abrifi, bringing you this week's announcement. Let's get started. Covenant Connections Ministries, in collaboration with Christ Covenant Chapel and the Ghanaian Ministers Association presents Game Changers 2024. This event is under the theme, Leading Innovations. This three-day conference will commence on Friday, April 12th through Sunday, April 14th, right here at Christ Covenant Chapel. We are privileged to have Bishop Paul Inya of Praise International Churches, Apostle Marcus Cage of Refuse Church, and our very own Reverend Kingsley Ayinsu as speakers. As part of this conference, please note that there will be a leadership seminar on Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. This seminar is open to all CCC leaders, workers or anyone who aspire to serve in any capacity of leadership is highly advised to attend this seminar. To register for the Leadership Development Seminar, please contact Minister Hill at 763-516-7180 by Sunday, April 7th. Remember, admission is free, so spread the word and see you there. Yafik is hosting a game night for all CCC young adults on Friday, April 19th at 6 p.m. This event is open to both CCC and non-CCC members and it will be held at 6100 Submit Drive in Brooklyn Center. For questions, please reach out to Brother Tim. His number is projected. As a council member, all CCC members are invited to join the MWDDC Fellowship Prayer Conference coming on Friday, April 5th and Saturday, April 6th at Refuse Church in St. Paul with our very own Pastor King as the keynote speaker. This two-day fellowship and prayer conference begin with a day session this Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m and an evening session from 7 to 9 p.m. followed by a half day session on Saturday, April 15th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. In view of the upcoming prayer conference, please note that this Friday half night service is canceled. In place of that, we will meet in person at the Refuge Church at 7 p.m. on Friday, April 5th and partake in the Council Prayer Conference. Here are the events happening at church this week. Monday Glory Hour on the prayer line at 5 a.m. Yafrik Bai Weekly Prayer Night on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. in person at Christ Covenant Chapel. Wednesday Bible Studies at 7 p.m. on Zoom and Facebook. Sunday family service in person and stream live on Facebook and YouTube. Here are the upcoming events. April 20th, new membership class. August 3rd, April Church Picnic. Connect with us on all our social media platforms. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast on Spotify. And don't forget to catch us on channel 859 if you have Comcast. This is the end of the announcements. May the power of his blood speak for you this week. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week and stay blessed. couple of very quick emphasis and we'll be out of here. Um, please, the MWDDC event, I encourage all of you to be there, um, especially the Friday evening service. And then, of course, Saturday is going to be uh, in the morning, I believe starting at 10 a.m. Is it 10 a.m.? Please, we encourage you to join. Please, please. Um, 
um, I, I received, I, I don't even know why that was necessary for, for, for it to be communicated to me. I was told that the diocesan bishop, Bishop Richard D. Howell, said they should let me know he will be introducing me himself. And I, <laughs> I said, I said, and I, I said it in Latin, I said, we in our pressure. It's, 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 it's Latin. It's like, it means all this is pressure. But please, um, come and at least support me. Amen. Come and support me. I'm pleading with you. Uh, they want our choir to minister before I speak, so our choir will be there with me. Please join us. And uh, even if you don't want to pray, just come and support me. Okay? I would love to see you there. Um, so it's Friday, I think 6.30 p.m., am I right? 6.30 p.m., something like that. The flyer is all over um, the internet. You should see it somewhere. And then also, because of that, the Friday half night is canceled. Please don't show up. We will not be here. And uh, finally, Game Changers is coming on. Um, if you're a worker, you're a worker in this church, you are required to be here. You are required to be here. We're going to be teaching on a lot of things, a lot of things. We want you to be here. Uh, Apostle Cage, that is his specialty. He, he's a leadership developer, big guy. He teaches on a lot of things that you will learn something, I promise you. I've been to a couple of seminars where he spoke, and he will be a blessing to you, trust me. And as for uh, Bishop Nya, I don't need to introduce him to you guys. Uh, you know what he carries, and we'll be praying for people, laying hands, ministering to you, it's going to be a packed event. Please come, and uh, you'll be blessed. Um, and I think that is it. Am I all right? Is there anyone visiting with us for the first time? This is your first time. Can you shoot your right hand in the air? First time. First time is anybody. I see a couple. Oh, amen. 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 Can you keep your hand up, please? Can you keep your hand up? We have a little package for you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you all for coming. Those who invited them, God bless you for inviting them. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Bible says that he who brings, I won't say it, you, you, may, you may take offense. Right? But if I say it, I'm only quoting scripture, right? But I know how you all is. <laughs> no. Oh. Auntie Naomi. No, you know, I don't know if you guys even know when I'm joking. Do you know when I'm joking? You do. So, Antinami, you know I'm joking, right? Thank you. <laughs> because I know me, sometimes me, myself, I get confused. I don't know when I'm joking and when I'm serious. Because when I'm joking, I'm actually trying to say a serious thing in a funny way. So, I, I don't <laughs> But... But on a serious note, thank you all for joining us for Easter today. You could have gone to any other church. We appreciate you being here. God bless you. We are done with service. Please rise up. Are we having reception today? There is reception downstairs. Please don't. You all look too wonderful to rush home. To hang around. Take pictures. Okay? Take pictures. You, you know, you, you, I, I don't know about you. You dress up. You look good. People must see it. Yeah. Pastor, that is why I mean sometimes when I dress good and even I'm not supposed to do, I just come and pray. Just do something so you see it. What is the point of dressing looking good and just take it home and nobody sees it? So I have to find a way and put myself in the program so you see it. And don't you see where I park my car? I want you to see it. I'm just kidding. It's the spot they gave me. I have to pack that. <laughs> Let's go home. Let's go home. Please rise up on your feet. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you see, if you come to church and you can't have fun, you are in trouble. Oh. Yeah. Laugh. Laugh. Bible says laughter does good like medicine. Some of you, you don't need all this Tylenol and all this. Just laugh. You will be fine. You'll be fine. When, when Minister Mavis said, you can't go to the club and disco, I, I laughed. Because I could tell how old she is. Disco, pa, disco, disco. 
Who remembers disco? <laughs> the moment she said disco, I, I looked at my, my, my protocol guys. I said, disco. They, she, at least 50 plus. <laughs> All right. Some at least club I can consider, but disco. <laughs> Let's share the benediction. <laughs> All right. The grace, the grace. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Continue blessing you until you become a blessing. Have a blessed weekend, everybody. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us today at Christ Covenant Chapel. We hope today's service has impacted and inspired you. Remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay connected with us on our social media platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify by searching for Christ Covenant Chapel. We look forward to seeing you again. Have a blessed week.